You think aliens are have sentience, and if they do, how do we think about it? So when you, when you have this framework, what is this paper? What is what is the way you propose to think about sentience? Yeah, that 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 particular paper was was a very short um, commentary on another paper that was written about crabs. It was a really good paper on them, uh, crabs and and various like a, like a rubric of. Uh, of uh, different types of behaviors that uh, that could be applied to different creatures and they're trying to apply it to crabs and so on. Um, I, I've, consciousness, we, we can talk about it if you want, but it's a whole separate kettle of fish. I, 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 I almost never talk about consciousness. crabs. In this case, yes. Uh, I, I almost never talk about consciousness per se. I've said very, very little about it, but we can we can talk about it if you want. Mostly what I talk about is, is cognition because I think that that's much easier to deal with in a um, kind of rigorous experimental experimental way. I think that um, all of these all of these terms have uh, you know sentience and 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 so on have different definitions, and I f fundamentally I think that people can as long as they specify what they mean ahead of time. Um, I think people can define them in various ways. The one the 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 only thing that I really kind of insist on is that the right way to think about all this stuff is 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 an from an engineering perspective what does it help me to to control predict and uh, to and does it help me do my next experiment so 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 that that's that's not a universal perspective so some people have uh philosophical kind of uh, underpinnings and those are primary and if anything runs against that then it must automatically be wrong so so some people will say i don't care what else if your theory says to me that thermostats have little tiny goals i'm not i'm not i'm, I'm out so that's it i just like that's my philosophical you know preconception that like thermostats do not have goals and that's it mm -hmm. so um so that's one way of doing it and some people do it that way i do not do it that way and i think that we can't if we we can't I, I don't think we can know much of anything from an from a philosophical armchair i think that all of these theories and ways of doing things stand or fall based on just just basically one set of criteria does it help you run a rich research program that's it yeah. so i agree with you totally but so forget philosophy. What about the poetry of ambiguity? What about at the limits of the things you can engineer using terms that are that can be defined in multiple ways and living within that yeah. uncertainty in order to play with words until something lands mm. that you can engineer? Mm. I mean, that's to me where consciousness sits currently. Nobody really understands the 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 hard problem of consciousness the subject what it feels like because it really feels like it feels like something to be this biological system this conglomerate of a bunch of cells in this hierarchy yep. of competencies feels like something and yeah I feel like one thing and is that just is that just a a, a side effect of a complex system or is there something more that humans have or is there something more that any biological system has some kind of magic some kind of not just a sense of agency but a real sense with a capital letter s of agency yeah uh boy uh, yeah that's a deep <laughs> is question there, yeah. is there room for poetry and engineering or no no there there definitely is and, and a lot of the poetry comes in when we realize that none of the categories we deal with are sharp as we think they are right and so and so in the you know in the different areas of, of of all these spectra are where a lot of the poetry sits. I have many new theories about things, but I, in fact, do not have a, a, a good theory about consciousness that I plan to trot out. So, And you almost don't see it as useful for your current work to think um, about consciousness. I think it will come. I have some thoughts about it, but I don't feel like they're going to move the needle yet on, on that. But you want to ground it in, in, in engineering always. So, well... I mean, I don't. So, 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 if you, if we really tackle consciousness per se in terms of the hard problem, I don't, I don't. That that isn't necessarily going to be groundable in engineering, right? That that aspect of it, cognition is, but actual consciousness per se, you know, for first person perspective, I'm not sure that that's groundable in engineering. And I think specifically, what's different about what's different about it is there's a, there's a couple things. So, so let's you know, here we go. I'll I'll say, I'll say a couple things about about consciousness. One one, one thing is that. What makes it different is that for every other type aspect of science, when we think about having a correct or a good theory of it, 
we have some idea of what format it, that theory makes predictions in. So whether those be numbers or whatever, we, we have some idea. We may not know the answer. We may not have the theory, but we know that when we get the theory, here's what it's going to output, and then we'll know if it's right or wrong. For actual consciousness, not behavior, not neural correlates, but actual first-person consciousness, if we had a correct theory of consciousness or even a good one, what the hell would, what, what format would, would it make predictions in? Right, because because all the things that we know about basically boil down to observable behaviors. So the only thing I can think of when I think about that is 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 what, it, it'll be poetry or it'll be it'll be it'll be something to um, if if I ask you, okay, you've got a great theory of consciousness and here's this here's this creature, maybe it's a natural one, maybe it's an engineer one, whatever, and I want you to tell me what your theory says about this 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 being's um, uh, what it's like to be this being. The only thing I can imagine you giving me is some piece of art, a poem or or, or something that once I've taken it in, I share, uh, I, 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 I now have a similar state as whatever. That's, that's about as good as I can come up with. Well, it's possible that once you have a good understanding of consciousness, it would be mapped to some things that are more measurable. So for example, it's possible that a conscious being is one that's able to suffer. So you start to look at pain and suffering. Mm -hmm. You can start to connect it closer to things that you can measure that in terms of how they reflect themselves in behavior and problem solving and uh, creation and attainment of goals, for example, which I think suffering is one of the you know, life is suffering. It's one of the one of the big aspects of the the human condition. And so, if consciousness is somehow a maybe at least a catalyst for suffering, you could start to get like echoes of it, and you start you, you you start to see like the actual effects of consciousness on behavior. That it's not just about subjective experience. It's like it's really deeply integrated in the problem solving. Uh, decision making of a system, uh, something like this. But also, it's possible that we realize uh, this is not a philosophical statement. Philosophers can write their books. I, I welcome it. Uh, you know, I I take the Turing test really seriously. I I don't know why people really don't like it when uh, a robot convinces you that it's intelligent. I think that's a really incredible accomplishment. And there's some deep sense in which that is intelligence. If it looks like it's intelligent, it is intelligent. And I think there's some deep aspect of um, a system that appears to be conscious. It, in some deep sense, it is conscious. Um, it, for, at least for me, we have to consider that possibility. And a system that appears to be conscious is an engineering challenge. Yeah, I, I don't disagree with any of that. I mean, especially intelligence, I think, is a publicly observable thing. Uh, I, I, and and I mean, you know, science fiction has dealt with this for a century or more, much more, maybe. Uh, this idea that when you are confronted with something that just doesn't meet any of your typical assumptions. So you can't look in the skull and say, oh, well, there's that frontal cortex. So then I guess we're good, right? If it's, if it's, you know, so, so this thing lands on your front lawn and this, you know, with the, the, the little door opens and something trundles out and it's sort of like, um, you know, kind of shiny and aluminum looking and, and it hands you this, uh, you know, it hands you this poem that it wrote while it was on, you know, flying over and how happy it is to meet you. Like, what are, what's going to be your criteria, right? For whether, whether you get to take it apart and see what makes it tick or whether you have to, you know, be nice to it and, and whatever, right? Like all the, all the criteria that we have now and, you know, that people are using. And as you said, a lot of people are down on the Turing test and things like this, but, but what else have we got? You know, because measuring, measuring a cortex size isn't going to, isn't going to cut it right in the broader scheme of things. So, uh, I think this is, a, it's, it's a wide open, it's a wide open problem that, right. That, that we, you know, our, our solution to the problem of other minds, it's very simplistic. Right, we we give each other credit for having minds just because we sort of on a you know on an anatomical level we're pretty similar and then so that's good enough. But how far how how far is that going to go? So I think that's really primitive. So um, yeah, I think I think it's a major unsolved problem. It's a really challenging uh, direction of thought to the human race 
uh, that you talked about, like embodied minds. If you start to think that other things other than humans have minds, that's really challenging. Yeah. Well, because all men are created equal starts starts being like, all right, well, we should probably treat not just cows with respect, yeah. but like plants and not just plants, but uh, some kind of organized conglomerates of cells in a petri dish. In, in fact, some of the work we're, <laughs> we're doing, like you're doing, and the whole community of science is doing with biology, people might be like, we were really mean to viruses. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I, the thing is, and you're right, and, and I get, I get, I certainly get phone calls about uh, people complaining about frog skin and so on, but I think we have to separate the sort of deep philosophical aspects of it versus what actually happens. So what actually happens on Earth is that people with exactly the same anatomical structure kill each other, you know, on a daily basis, right? So, so, so it, it, I think it's clear that simply knowing that something else is equally or maybe more uh, cognitive or conscious than you are is is not a guarantee of 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 kind behavior that, that that much we know of. So then and so then then we look at a commercial farming of mammals and various other things. And so so I think on a practical basis, long before we get to worrying about um, things like frog skin, we have to ask ourselves why are we. Uh, what, what what can we do about the way that we've been behaving with, to, towards creatures, which we know for a fact are be, because of our similarities, are are basically just like us? You know, that's kind of a whole other this, this social thing. But 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 fundamentally, you know, of course, you're absolutely right in that we we are also think about this. We are on this planet in some way incredibly lucky. It's just dumb luck that we really only have one dominant species. It didn't have to work out that way. So you could easily imagine that there could be a planet somewhere with more than one equally or maybe near equally intelligent species. And then, uh, but, but and they, they may not look anything like each other, right? So there may be multiple ecosystems where there are uh, things of, of, of similar uh, to human-like intelligence. And then you'd have all kinds of issues about you know how do you how do you relate to them when they're physically not like you at all? But yet, yet you know, in terms of behavior and culture and whatever, it's pretty obvious that the, that they've got as you know as much on the ball as you have. Or maybe imagine imagine that there was another um, group of beings that was like on average you know forty IQ points lower, right? Like like we're just we're pretty lucky in many ways. We, we you know we don't really have even though we we sort of you know we still act badly in many ways. But 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 the fact is you know all humans are more or less in the like in the same that same range but it didn't have to work out that way well but i think that's part of the way life works on earth or maybe human civilization works is it seems like we want us, ourselves to be quite similar and then within that you know where everybody's about the same relatively iq intelligence problem solving capabilities even physical characteristics but then we'll find some aspect of that yeah. that's different. And that, that seems to be like, I mean, it's it's really dark to say, but that seems to be the um, not even a bug, but like a feature of the early development of human civilization. You pick the other, your tribe versus the other tribe and you war, it's a kind of, Evolu evolution in the space of of memes, a space of ideas, I think, and you war with each other. So we're very good at finding the other, even when the characteristics are really the same. Yeah. And that's what, I don't know what that. I mean, I'm sure so many of these things echo in the biological world in yeah, some way. Yeah, there's a fun um, experiment that uh, I did. Uh, my, my my son actually came up with this. So we we did um. Uh, a, a biology unit together. He was a homeschool, and so we did this a couple of years ago. We did this thing where, imagine you got this slime mold, right? Physarum polycephalum, and it grows on a um, uh, on a uh, on a petri dish of agar, and it sort of spreads out, and and it's it's it's, it's a single cell, you know, protist, but it's like this giant thing. And so you put down a piece of oat, and it wants to go get the oat, and it sort of grows towards the oat. So what you do is you take a razor blade. And you just you just separate the piece of the whole culture that's growing towards the the oh you just kind of separate it, and so now think about think about the interesting decision making calculus for that little piece. I can I can go get the oat, and therefore I won't have to share those nutrients with this giant mass over there. So the so the nutrients per unit volume is going to be amazing. So I should go eat the oat. 
But if I first rejoin, because Pythorum, once you cut it, has the ability to join back up. If I first rejoin, then that whole calculus becomes impossible because there is no more me anymore. There's just we, and then and then we will go eat this thing, right? So, so this interesting, you know, this this you can imagine a kind of game theory where the number of agents isn't fixed, and that it's not just cooperate or defect, but it's actually merge and 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 whatever, right? Yeah. So that kind of that that computation, how does it do that decision making? Yeah. So 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 that, right. So so it's 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 really interesting, and so and so empirically, what we found is that it it tends to merge first. It tends to merge first, and then the whole thing goes. But but it's really interesting that 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 calculus. Like, do we even have? I mean, I'm not an expert in, in the economic game theory and all that, but maybe there's a cal- maybe some sort of hyperbolic discounting or something. But but maybe you know this idea that the the actions you take not only change your payoff, mm-hmm. but they change who or what you are, and that you may not you you could take an action after which you don't exist anymore, or you are radically changed, or you are merged with somebody else. Like that's I, you know, as far as I know, that's a whole you know we, we're still missing a formalism for even knowing how to how to model any of that.